so surprise hey new camera angles you guys i'm so excited in chat hydro jack 420 thank you so much for the suggestion so we are going to be making ourselves a pretzel crusted chicken it's gonna come with a mustard sauce that goes with it it's gonna be thickened by cornstarch and uh we're gonna be making that today for the stream i apologize i am running i am i'm trying to do this recipe off of a picture of a handwritten recipe so i am trying to make sure i don't mess this up by doing anything crazy so let me move stuff out of the way so that we have ourselves a good there we go just wanted to make sure everything's set up uh we need to crush up some pretzels so we can get ourselves our coating for later so we're gonna go ahead and start doing that i'm gonna i'm trying to kill time right now so i can see if i can finish defrosting my chicken because i thought i had bought fresh chicken and i did not so i was really freaking out like 20 minutes before the stream started and i was trying to see if i had any chicken breasts in the freezer and i did and so then i'm trying to now quickly defrost as fast as i can these chicken breasts that i have and i am oh it is rough and coming right now working on it though so let's get our uh, bowls ready to receive our crushed up pretzels we're gonna need some a breading apparatus i think this size should be enough should be good oh sorry Ooh, this thing is strong so we're gonna crush these pretzels until they are we have to pulse it until they are small enough I don't want them to be dusty but at the same time they're not really crushing the way they should we might have to do this again they're turning into dust much better it's not perfect but it'll get the job done that's good that's good all right so we're gonna have to do this a couple of times to make sure we have all the pretzels we need i think we can go a little heavy-handed now on the pouring of the pretzel sticks Agreed. So here's our pretzel pieces. Yes, some of it's dusty, some of it's chunky. That's just kind of par for the course for what we're doing here. You'll have more control over the crunchy uh, density of your stuff if you do it by hand. But you know, I am incredibly lazy and uh, doing uh, other stuff myself. So let me go ahead and get the flour out. I'm, before I start getting messy with the chicken, I want to make sure I have everything else already settled out for our chicken stuff what i need to start doing is start boiling water because i need to start cooking potatoes for our croquette potatoes and that actually allows me to start making that's going to allow me to start using my ricer which i'm very excited about i bought something obviously with the gift card so that i got as christmas gifts at williams and sonoma from tally and uh so we used it and i bought myself a ricer and i am I, I will show you what that is it's not what you think it is 24 dollars what what are you talking about wait 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 i can't read it this far away hang on let me fill this up i'm filling up a pot of water we're going to be using it to start boiling i'm going to add a shit ton of salt to the water so that the uh, potatoes can absorb some saltiness while they're getting cooked 
24 dollars for an omelet what okay so that at that in that case then you're just paying for the experience of a gourmet omelet at that point which is fair some people uh want more experiences in their lives more than just fancy stuff and i totally respect that okay so you spains are crazy <laughs> 24 dollars what octopus omelet i'm in oh my god octopus really ah that's weird you're weird so here's our water behold my new camera angle my new camera period so i took my razor stargazer that used to be my kitchen cam and that thing is now my stove cam and i have to say it makes everything look so beautiful okay so we're gonna leave that in there I'm gonna let it start cooking and boiling off. We are definitely not ready to do anything with this except just let it uh, start boiling out. Oh, we have completed our pretzel uh, breading station. So this is what we're gonna need for everything. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and on one side, I guess. We are going to dust our chicken with that flour. Make sure it gets everywhere. Awesome. So that's our very floured chicken. Yeah, the one near me is Michelin recommended. That is fucking cool, Stavarello. That is that is pretty fucking cool. All right. So shaking off the excess flour, putting it in. Remember, the recipe said it'll only put it on one side, so I am obliging. All right, so I'm gonna let some of that egg drip down. Oh, fuck. Come on. Okay, and then, uh, pretzels. One, two, three, pretzel. So we're gonna go in there, we're gonna press it down to make sure that the pretzel gets in and connects with as much egg as we can. There we go. That looks pretty nice, actually. And then just stick some more extra where you think you need it once you flip it over. Ooh, excuse me. There we go. That's nice. Shake off some excess. And Bob's your uncle. There's our first chicken crusted pretzel. Awesome. Run going here. Okay. we Okay, so it says I need two tablespoons of butter, so we'll just do that. I know that's more than two tablespoons, but I don't care. Where's the other little one? Oh my god, thank you so much, Kiturk, for the biddies. Hey, I'm new. Decided to show some love. Thank you so much, Kiturk, for for that love. I appreciate it. Any help is greatly appreciated. Alrighty, so we're gonna go in here and we're gonna attempt to like pan fry our chicken. I should have waited a little longer. I was fearful of missing out. I was FOMO about the butter stuff here.
Here is our corn pleated chickens uh, with a nice crust. Maybe more burned as we went along, but that's kind of par for the course for me. I tend to do that a lot. But it, for the most part, it looks great. Uh, it looks very well made. I'm super sad that I did not season the chicken. One of these days, I'll have a stove cam. I mean, uh, shit. I didn't mean to leave that in there. Oh, well. One of these days, I'll have an oven cam, you guys. One day. All right, so I need to get a bucket of, need to get a bowl ready, because we're gonna start making our potatoes for our croquette potatoes. Okay, so we have ourselves our perdurders that I gotta rinse off, and then we gotta peel. Okay, well, juices are running clear. We have nice firmness of the chicken. Uh, so I think we're okay. Go ahead and put that on the kitchen, uh, I'm sorry, on the stove cam so you can see how it has turned out. I think it's turned out quite good. I am a little sad that I pulled these out or that I baked these too early. They should have been baking while I was deep frying the uh, last of our croquette potatoes. So we are taking our potatoes for our croquette potatoes and we're just getting them ready to boil into the pot of water. Salted, of course, uh, on the stove. We're gonna go ahead and move the placement of the pot of water that's currently in the back burner and we'll move that closer to the front so you guys can get a better view about what's going on. We're gonna switch places. Okay, so we can turn down the heat just a little bit. My hand's being protected by the silicone baking mat. Ooh. I know, this is like super crazy splash damage. I'm not even a boss in WoW. Ow. I made it through the whole way except the last push where I got burned on the last push. <coughs> Go figure. We're gonna go ahead and take our pots, drain out our padurders. Most of the water is in the potato, so you can see our cooked potatoes right here, but they are steamy as shit. They're gonna have to be steamy for a while. And uh, it gives me time to let them evaporate for a little bit before I move on into the next uh, phase of our plan here. So I'm going to go ahead and let that do its thing. Alrighty, so did I get everything? Hopefully this works, you guys. All right, let me get my flavor enhancers here. Now the recipe I used said cheddar cheese, 
maybe i don't want to use cheddar cheese i need to use this though i mean uh, mozzarella cheese the recipe said to use mozzarella cheese mm, maybe i don't want to use mozzarella cheese i'm definitely using cheddar though and we're going to be using this stuff called borsin garlic and fine herbs gourmet cheese it says gourmet not gourmet so we're gonna go ahead and let that get hot up to about 350 degrees. It's gonna take a quite a bit of time, which is why I started that now. All right, so we're just gonna be sticking in our mashed potatoes up in this breezy. All right, so we're gonna cut it quite a big ways up here. It's gonna look weird, but once we do the breading, shouldn't be a issue. So let's see how we can make this look. So, ooh. oh wow, it's not much I can do with this. There we go. There we go. That's what I want. Fat torpedoes, guys. Fat little torpedo things. Here's our potato. All right, let's do this. Let's uh, pump some out so we can uh, start frying them while we make more. All right, so I'm just gonna do the best I can to let it cover itself. It did, excellent. Covered itself in the egg, nice. So I don't have to, you know, the less I touch it, the better. This is why I don't like egg batter because I have to touch egg. Not a fan, not a fan of raw egg in my hands. I don't mind it making it for a recipe that I need but I'd prefer not to and this is coming from this and that's me saying that and I love 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 to uh, <laughs> I love to handle raw uh, ground beef so I'm a weirdo all right so uh. Mm. two three it's not a clear oil because i still have potato starch in it from the korean fried chicken uh where's my spider it's over here okay so we just there the potatoes already cooked and obviously you can see that uh the air pre if there's air inside they're start they're gonna burst out all right so they're misshapen because there's i guess there was air in there and they were popping out for best results, oh boy. For best results, be gentle when they come out and uh, maybe freeze the potatoes next time so that they don't bust out like this. And we'll shave off one minute into the cooking. Okay. Turning the temperature slightly up higher. You know, it looks like they're floating to the top. I'm going to take the floating to the top as a sign that they're done. And so after I'm done with this, I got to fish those out. And maybe I'll keep frying at a lower temperature. I think it might be better for now. Okay, so we need two cups or one pint or 32 ounces of heavy whipping cream and then we're gonna leave that on a gentle heating because i don't want to scald this till i'm ready i'm at the right place uh one come on i should have enough oh my god please tell me i'm gonna okay there three tablespoons 
When the heavy cream's warm enough, it'll just take that stuff off for you. Nice. I'm gonna need this for later. So we have our mustard in here. I see no yellow. I feel like there should be yellower and it's not. Uh, cream and mustard, bring to a simmer, and then add the sage, salt, pepper. We're using cornstarch as a thickener. We have to make a cornstarch slurry first. So we have to hydrolyze our cornstarch first in cold water and then add it to hot simmering sauce. So it's starting to simmer. So let's go ahead and add our other ingredients like our sage, salt and pepper. Usually, uh, yeah, you don't need a lot of cornstarch, but this is gonna be a very tight sauce. Plus the longer you cook this cornstarch, the thicker and tighter your sauce is gonna be. So it's up to you how long you wanna cook it out. All right, so we have some nice sage in here. Let's get our salt and pepper in there. Guys, this is already like turning out to be a really good recipe. And it's thanks to Hydro Jack, who uh, was gracious enough to let him share his girlfriend's recipe of mustard sauce that accompanies the pretzel crusted chicken that we have made earlier today. Let's mix it up so none of it had settled down to the bottom. Alrighty, when it gets in there, whisk it in, let it cook. The longer it cooks, the stiffer it gets. Keep that in mind. It's, oh, wow. This is already stiff. Okay. Okay. It's ribboning. It's gloopy already. It's gloopy already. I love it. So I'm going to take it off the heat so it doesn't get any tighter. I got to build my weaknesses. And one of my weaknesses is my inability to plate good food. Like so... Maybe move them off a little bit to the side. Hey, for effort. Yeah, there's no way to make that look good. You can't. And if you can, I'm just not skilled enough to do so. I feel like Oni knows when I'm making plating dinner because she like comes from wherever she is upstairs and just starts running down here trying to beg for food. Okay, maybe I fucked that up, but it's okay. It's still gonna taste good. So let's take pictures. And then I'm also on Twitter at fail underscore Lula on Twitter as well. All right, so we're going to add the sauce. We're going to add the chicken. Ow. Ooh. Ooh. This is good. I mean, this is really good. I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful weekend. Peace, love, happy cooking, everybody. You guys have a great day, all right? Cool beans. I'm out. It's time. I'm outies.